Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, welcome everybody. And this is the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. To my right are Kurt Dukach and Raymond Fletcher. Beach is on vacation at Burning Man, getting mighty wet this week. Playing so, in the mud. Yeah, playing in the mud. Uh, so we're going to start out with local news, and we have got a bunch of local news. There are so Ooh. many things happening last week that it's just insanity. What do you got for us, Raymond? Well, not only last week, we have this week as well what's going on. Last week, uh, we had the interim. you got to say the title of this. <laughs> it's a very long, it's a very the, long. It's the, the Senate, advisory. The advisory uh, subcommittee sub- on justice for medical marijuana for the state of Nevada, uh, on which I served uh, on the board for. And it was our last meeting, but there were so many things that happened. So many. And we we are literally standing in the doorway of history. And this, this is awesome. Um, Commissioner Christian Kiliani, I think this is the biggest news coming out of that meeting. Commissioner Christian Kiliani pushed to have marijuana rescheduled from a, a, a Schedule 1 controlled substance to a Schedule 2 for the state of Nevada. She got a bunch of hooting and hollering from the uh, from the crowd out there basically saying, no, schedule it to Class 3. To, you know, put it to Schedule 3. Put it to Schedule 3. The problem with that, and she answered from the bench. She didn't have to, but she answered from the bench. Listen, very eloquently. Yes, she did. Mm-hmm. She answered from the bench. Listen, if we put it to Schedule 3, the feds will freak out. Out. They will shut us down is exactly the words that she used. Right. If we move from a Schedule 1 to a Schedule 3, they will shut us down. And, and you know what? These these things that happen at this interim com, uh, committee meeting aren't set in stone. So if you think that these were victories, no, they're, they're this is just the lob on the first ba- you know ba- battle of this of this leg. Yeah, this is getting through the subcommittee, which is was was handpicked to all the people on this committee by Tick Seegerbloom. So everybody in this are are cannabis professionals and people that are pro cannabis. Now, when it moves up to the actual judiciary committee, we're going to get a few more naysayers in there in the, to that committee. So, and then it goes up to one more after that. So, you know, out of everything that came out of this meeting, we can we can hope to get fifty to seventy percent of it through. Some of it's going to fall off, but you know, we can just hope we get the best stuff in. So, uh, what the important points were were the uh, rescheduling of cannabis, the rescheduling, and and for the state, I, for the state. Yes, Kurt, you're absolutely right. And and I am honored to be re- uh, represented by the wonderful Commissioner June Kiliani and Senator Tick Siegerbloom. They are my representatives. They're doing a phenomenal job. But what also we're being able to get pushed per- through is, if you recall, at the last legislative committee, they are going to introduce legislation. So if you're on a state program like Job Connect, like a Voc Rehab program, any of the state-funded programs, you cannot get kicked off for being a medical marijuana patient. But now what they're also pushing is if you are an employee, you may not be terminated from your job. Woohoo! You're welcome. <laughs> because you are a medical marijuana patient. And I tried to make the point to the good senator is, you know, if you take a Tylenol, if you're taking Oxycontin, or if you're taking anything like that, you're not going to get fired from your job. Why, if you're taking this form of medication, so long as you have a state identification card, are you going to get terminated from your employment? And, you know, Chris G. had a really great story about that, about a an employee that was sitting at their desk and a chandelier fell on them and they got drug tested and fired. Um, and, and she was just really adamant about that. That had nothing to do with anything in the person's system and um and and they got fired and and so they were really behind 
keeping workers' rights and cannabis rights, uh, you know, strong in the state of Nevada. You're absolutely right. And I've made no secret about it that I myself was terminated from my place of employment for being a medical marijuana patient. And it's not fair to me. It's not fair to every hardworking American. No, it's not. Um, there were some other points made also. Really great points. Child care. Uh, child custody Child issues. custody right. yes, issues. You're right. Family court. Being a patient doesn't take away your parental rights. You're absolutely right. Just because, and again, you know, if, if, if I took a Vicodin, is that going to change how I'm a parent for my child? Well, it might because Vicodin most of the time knocks most people out and makes them incapable of doing a lot of things. So Same with Xanax and other medications. You're absolutely right, Kurt. And, and I am glad to have so many wonderful friends out there advocating at this last meeting. I mean, so much came through. Sure. And, you know, um, on testimony about the, about the child issue was uh, Keith Patton. And you guys can look up it up, Google it. Uh, and he has a really great story about how he came out here just to be near his child and because his ex-wife raised accusations about his cannabis use and he's a legal cannabis patient that he lost custody of his child for merely being a patient not for any type of neglect abuse or or any type of misconduct and, and that's the thing that i didn't get you know i got to watch some of the clips that he had posted and one of them um is uh his ex is an admitted recreational patient, mm -hmm. and he's a medical patient. But you're going to give custody to someone to, that admits using it recreationally versus someone using it for a medicinal form? I, I, I don't get it, but uh, we need to toss our support out to him. Don't forget, he's got a, a case coming up. I think it's uh, September 18th. I believe it was, yeah. yeah we want to make sure that we lend our support to, to our fellow community members on that. Oh, yep. for sure. We'll post it, and, and if, uh, if he wants court support, you know, we can pack the pack the courtroom. Now, remember, when, when these people ask for court support, you need to come in there and be respectful and, you know, don't come in wearing the pot t-shirts, you know. Look look professional and stand behind them and, you know, keep you're, order in the court. You're, and keep you're, order. Yeah, you're in court, you know. This is exactly. one of the times you want to dress a little more... Um, professional? Thank you, yes. Yeah, don't, don't show up and hurt his case, you know. We're trying to help him. Well, not only that, don't uh, don't shout or boo or hiss or make noises in in the um, you know in in the court because this is a court and you have to respect the court rules. If you don't agree with what the judge or what the or what um, the prosecutor or, or what the other attorney is saying, or you want or you agree with what he is saying, uh, Keith being. You know, don't don't start shouting and and you know, ooh, yeah, ooh, woo, ooh, woo, ooh, woo, 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 or anything. This this is not Judge Judy, okay? Uh, <laughs> this is serious, and this is a man's livelihood, a man's and and a man's and child, child. and a right. child that we're talking about that he wants to get back. So we want to help Keith. We don't want to hurt his case. You know, and and, and I'm I'm thankful that going forward, uh, should the legislature adopt these. We, we will never have to, people like Keith will never have to go through the situation again. You know, that's why we need to continue to advocate. Find out who your state representative is. Find out who your state senator is and call. If you agree with the things that we are advocating for, if these are positions that you firmly believe in, then it's incumbent upon you to contact your representatives and make sure they advocate your wishes because they are your representatives. This is true. This is true. So yeah. some of the other points that were made at that meeting. The removing the per diem on uh, drug driving and also rolling that over into employment so that you That's can't be great. fired if, if you one. test positive. That's right. Um, they, also, um, they also voted to move the sunset clause that is impending in April 2016 to March of 2018. Now, they still need to vote on this, but we have to keep in mind Metro did get on board on this one at this meeting. Well, it's ironic that Metro got on board with it um, because the reason they got on board with it was that we don't know if uh, these dispensaries will be up and running by then, so we can't just take it away from the people if we don't know the dispensaries are, you know, are, are operational. Which well, I agree with and i'm glad that the cops got behind us in any way shape or form on this but the reason it was not because of nevada freedoms it wasn't because of patients rights or activism it was because the dispensaries aren't going to be open yet the dispensaries aren't going to be and, open yet and, well, and not in time for them to make legislation about them you're right you know but but the fact that that they had extended it 
you know, shows that they're, they're willing to work on some issues. And going back to Chris G right quick, you know, we got an inch changing it from schedule one to schedule two. You know, as yep. long as we get these little victories and keep notching up these little victories, we will have the big picture of what all patients have been advocating for. And, and that, at the end of the day, is going to be the huge success. So we got on our foot in the door. Now to shove the knee in the door. And, and you know, we'll just get through on this one for sure. Just keep kicking them in the shins. They'll fall over eventually. I've used my wheelchair to keep barge doors open a number of times. I'll gladly do it on this issue. <laughs> right on, Raymond. We also have the final numbers in. Was that all from the legislature? The Was meeting, that all the, the meeting? The extend the grow, the the number for ancillary the ancillary businesses. The ancillary businesses, yes. So one of our listeners uh, and one of my friends, Eddie, he he asked us to. Uh, advocate for ancillary businesses like uh, cannabis clubs so that you if you're a patient you can go into the club and smoke and and you know have a good time there as a patient and um, you know and, and the door was open for ancillary businesses and we also had some testimony for some people that have a business in Colorado that just do part-time trimming uh, I really like the idea that I heard about, you know, the, the ancillary businesses and part-time trimming and stuff like that. But the wages that, that the people were discussing was just like way too low uh, yeah, for they, my taste. $11 an hour for hand trimming? Without any benefits or anything. It was not a living wage. But we also got to keep in mind that it wasn't voting for that particular business I to come understand in. That. It was voting for businesses like this. So. Well, I, I mean, I, I fully understand that. But when they told me that the wages that they were paying, I was like, wow. Yeah, it was kind of kind of a joke. I'm like, how can anybody make a living on those wages? You'd have to have two jobs and both, you know, two, three members of your household working at that wage just to, you know, have any kind of life. Then we had the insurance company. Oh, the insurance company saying that they will insure businesses and can of businesses. Exactly. And, and go ahead. And the C Forever system was there too. With the that solves a lot of the banking issues. That was a re really a and that's reverse the one, ATM. That's the that's the one that Kurt really likes. I really liked it too. Actually, after the presentation, I was just like, "That's awesome." You know, there's no way to there's no way to ha divert. Uh, money to the black market yeah, and, um, it and, and i mean your bookkeeper would have to love it because every every transaction is recorded none of your employees touch cash you don't have to worry about cash shortages you don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff now i know i was giving you funny looks last week when you were trying to explain what the machine was and haven't seen it actually demonstrated i got like a hundred more questions i was asking jen about you know and they're good questions and i think you know having an opportunity to, to have a presentation and have that dialogue i think a lot of those questions would be because one of them okay what if you change your prices from one day to the next does somebody come in and change those i would think do that you, you would do the that online to, you yeah, know, I, would, I would think it would be pretty easy to do online to, to add in your menus into that so I'd, because I'd, it's linked to an online system isn't it so if it's all linked to an online system you could probably go in and do price changes stuff like that right i'm well, assuming when, 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 once you don't assume <laughs> Once I have all those, you know, questions answered, I think I would feel a lot more comfortable about it. But I do like it because you're keeping your, your cash away from your product. So you're not getting your, your money smelling like cannabis. Yeah. And then also every single transaction is recorded. And, there, and when it gets to the bank, there is no question like did any of this money come in through the back door or any product go out the back door. Everything is, is, is recorded. And that's part of the one of the things with the banking regulations is they want to know that none of this money has been diverted from the you know black market or, or laundering money or anything like that. And when you have a system that shows every transaction and records it even it even takes a picture of the person doing it just like an atm there is no question that each dollar is is recorded to an, an a, a legal transaction yeah so. and a living person for sure yeah. for sure so what else happened at the legislative meeting anything no we got the final numbers in and they've done a phenomenal breakdown of them where, really? So um, what Raymond's referring to are the final numbers from the state of Nevada for the applications from the MME establishments or MME is establishment. Yeah. OK. <laughs> All right. Medical marijuana. Establishments. Yes. The final number 
are 520 applications. Ooh, at that's $5, a lot of moolah. $5,000 each. 5000 a pop. Yeah, that's, that's over, over $2.5 million the state made already on this program. And those that get approved have to pay a $30,000 fee. But of those applications, 38% are dispensaries, 35 are cultivation, 23 are production, and 3% are lab. So you're looking at about 22, maybe 23 lab applications throughout the entire state. That was encouraging. I, I was kind of questioning that because I didn't hear a lot of news on anybody applying for labs. Uh, you know, everybody was just talking about cultivation, dispensary, dispensary. Cultivation. Yeah, that's a lot. That number is a lot, a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. I thought we might get maybe 10 or 12 different lab applications. but Well, not, not surprisingly, 70% of the applications submitted were from Clark County. 20 were from Washoe County. And the remaining 10% were the remaining counties. Right on, right on. So that sounds like a lot of money for the state and uh, a lot of money for to make a, a robust uh, program for the state of Nevada. The Holder Memo basically says that the feds will stay out of our state if we build a robust uh, regula regulated system within Nevada. And that's why they got so mad when uh, Clark County and the city started diverting some of these applications and having people apply at the city and um, Clark County is because Clark uh, is because the state said, yeah, you know, we need those funds from everybody up here. Yeah. And if you guys are discouraging them down in the municipalities, we won't have enough money to build this regulated uh, program for the state. Yeah, they and, have to hire a lot of people and put a lot of programs in place. So that's going to cost them some cost them some greenbacks. And that's funny you bring that up, Jen, because the city was talking about that yesterday. The city of Las Vegas had their their joint <laughs> no <pun intended. laughs> don't get distracted <laughs> had their joint planning commission city council meeting and the mayor had to abstain from even participating participating in the meeting because she had to do a disclosure her son ross is representing an applicant so the mayor pro temp ran the meeting and Stavros anthony you know, he's been anti-medical marijuana from the jump, so why you would have somebody against something that the people voted for running the meeting, it's beyond me. Well, he's a cop, so he has to come on with the rank and file of we're all freaking bad. And not only is he against it, he... he he quotes research from 25 years ago. He's like, oh he's such, God. he's, he's like spreads the propaganda and the reefer madness more than God. anyone I've seen. Uh, I thought up there. planes were going to come over and leaflets were going to fly out of the planes when he was talking. Like, yeah, oh my God. Kind of and here's the audacity of our great mayor pro temp. He wants to review the applications that the state approves and then gives his approval before saying yes or no. And that's not how the process was laid out. No, it wasn't. And we'll discuss more of this process when we come back from a break. And we have Chili of Las Vegas Hemp Fest for an interview, and we'll see you in a minute. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000 
That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. Las Vegas Hinterfest is here October 4th with live performances from Burn. Yeah, welcome to the Wax Room. Wax room. Baby Bash. Yeah, I she was on a bit of champagne. She... Cypress Hills Send Off. Dub C. Marlon Asher. Call me the Ganja Farmer. New Kingston. <laughs> and a surprise performance from the LBC. <laughs> 50 bands, DJs, speakers, and comics. All at the Las Vegas Hemp Fest October 4th. Get your tickets now at all Diversity Tattoo and Smoke Shop locations and at LasVegasHempFest.com. That's LasVegasHempFest.com. Brought to you by Dr. Reefer. we back. This is the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. And uh, uh, get your phones ready. Uh, we're going to give away a pair of HempFest tickets here to the fifth caller at 702-731-1230. That's 702-731-1230. And speaking of HempFest, we have Chili, the CEO of HempFest, here on the show with us right now. Welcome to the show, Chili. Thank you, thank you. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. So um, tell us a little bit about HempFest. What, you know, what, what exactly does this include? Wow. HempFest. Uh, what can I tell you about it? Most, most people have been to Seattle's HempFest. We, uh, we're actually in negotiations right now with Seattle's HempFest on future future business together. Um, we've uh, I've been booking festivals for, for 30 years. Right on. I've booked a lot of the talent at Seattle's HempFest for the last 10 years. Uh, my partner Levi up there and I. We've got a lot of the Seattle HempFest people coming down uh, from production for this one. And we've got, of course, the great John Davis is one of the hosts and speakers at uh, Las Vegas Hemp Fest. Um, we've been kind of looking at Las Vegas, watching the laws <clears throat> for the last five years, knowing someday it's going to change and what better place to do a Hemp Fest than Las Vegas. I agree. It's, I agree. I'm totally excited. <laughs> it's the entertainment capital. And, uh, and it's, it's the laws changing is such a great thing. It's just opening doors. You, you can do so much more with the Hemp Fest in Las Vegas than you can do anywhere else. People love going to Vegas, period. Oh, yeah. We yeah. could do a Hemp Fest in Sacramento, California, and people are going to say, well, well that's cool, eh. but it, but they're not going to go from the other states. If you do it in Las Vegas, they're going to come from everywhere. Oh, yeah. You build it and they will come. <laughs> it's you one know, of my favorite and, movies. <laughs> and I really love the venue. The, the Reggae Fest is held out there and uh, a lot of um, jazz in the park are out there. Great shows. It's a great venue. And when I heard this, I was just like, yeah, I love you guys, Clark County. It's neat. It's it's the, the amphitheater itself is designed perfectly. It's uh, that's only got a 6,000 capacity right there in front of that stage. We've outgrown that, so now we've opened up uh, one parking lot. And now we're opening up another parking lot. So we're we're looking at the big numbers for this for this festival. Uh, wow, and I think the, I think that it's going to be totally a blowout. We heard there were 900,000 people at Seattle's Hemp Fest this year. And I hope that we don't have that many people here because it would be like totally. <laughs> It'd be chaos. <laughs> <laughs> That's those. I'm not, I can't. I don't. I can't confirm those numbers. <clears throat> um, I know we've been. I know every year it's 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 getting a little over five hundred thousand. Oh uh, wow! Yeah. It's. Uh, but you're talking to four days also. So yeah, I, I, I could see that happening. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's mm -hmm. quite the. Quite the amusement up there. <laughs> For somebody that has never been to a hemp fest, what what can they expect? What what should they look for? Oh my god! What, I mean, because <laughs> I'm 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 getting I'm getting questions. Do we have to have a medical marijuana car? You know, what what kind of things are going to be there? What can and can't we do? You you don't have to have a medical card to get in. Um, we don't cater. You know, the laws in, in Las Vegas are a little bit still up in the air. 
Uh, medical marijuana, of course, is, is legal to an extent of for medical use. One thing that is good is the Nevada state honors other states' medical cards. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. which is a big question for people because they said, well, do I have to get a Nevada state medical card? No, you don't. They honor all their states, right. and that is done. So that that's great. Um, as far as um, getting too extreme, I mean, you, you can expect just about everything there. For sure. I heard that there's going to be booze um, with people with hydroponic stuff, uh, new smoking type of stuff. Um, T-shirts, you know, speakers, comics. Oh, we've got, we've comics. got, we've, we have got vendors coming from Amsterdam. Woo! That uh, <laughs> we've got, um, we've got uh, fertilizer companies coming from Brazil and Chile. Oh wow! Uh, that claim, and they've got the best fertilizers in the world. We've got several uh, grow houses. Um, my buddy Jason Ellis Technologies. He's part of Hempfest. He's sitting over here. He's got, uh, they specialize in building grow houses and he's got the, the newest technology of lighting. It's, um, it's- is it, is it spectrum, wide spectrum lighting or LED? It's got, it's all LED stuff. He brought one here it's for me that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a flower light. It's LED, oh. LED lighting. It's so neat and they just expand these huge areas and they don't get hot, no fires. So that's the type of stuff you're going to see there. You're going to see a lot of glass blowers, a lot of um, we've got we've got some specialists that um, that are the you see all these buds on f Facebook and social medias that are bright pink and yeah. purples and people yeah. are saying that's not that's that's fake that's Photoshop. Well, we've got a lot of that that's real um, people who know how to you know specialists with the different fertilizers and the temperatures who actually create that stuff i know i so. grew blue dream for a long time and with the blue dream if you get it down into the, like the 60s you really have those blue and purple hues come out and and i had people tell me are you putting food coloring in your water or you know i'm like no <laughs> i'm just getting that room icy cold you're right well, well now they're claiming that they they can do it uh, without without temperature they can do it with the with the just the lighting the spectrum with the, with lighting? the lighter lighting and the fer i guess the fertilizer mix has got a lot to do with it so um you know these 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 it's just every day it changes i mean just new technology so it's pretty neat but there's a lot of that you're going to see there a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of interesting of course we've got five stages also with so yeah, 50 there, different bands and it looks like there's a little of something for everybody and it and this is an all ages event so you know you can bring your family out uh once again it's on october 4th so yeah. so we'll have nice weather by then yeah it should be, be cooling off weather in the valley the all ages has been a people been you know questioning that mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. you know because of but but you know there's a lot to what we're about we're we're really about the medical reasons yep and not just to legalize a swimmer they can go have fun and, and do their thing we're more about uh the medical reasons and, and being said there's there's a lot of kids that we support we've got some we do a lot of uh, financial support for for kids that are fighting cancer and, and using medical you know caretakers sure. situations like that we've got some speakers who are actually bringing their kids who are cancer patients and are surviving from the medical marijuana so that's our reason why yep silas know. is going to be there and mickey and Artie. right um mm -hmm. and you know these people are are going through difficult times and with their children and i know that you know whenever anything happens to my kids or you know it just hurts me so much and all ages it it takes the stigma out of cannabis use you know we are very family f friendly people um you know and Las Vegas Normal is throwing a party on uh, September 20th. Um, it's an all ages event at the Sunset Park yep. because we'd like to take the stigma out of cannabis use. It's not something that, you know, it's not something that should be like hidden and, and, and put away in a closet or, you know, shuffled that, off somewhere that's else. That's right. This, this truly is medicine. And you, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't teach our kids to be afraid of it. We should educate our kids about what it is and what it does. And when they're adults, let them make the choices, you know, that, you know, the correct choices. Don't don't lead them with fear. Lead them with knowledge. Perfect. Yeah, I, that's, you could, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> <laughs> so not only do we have you here in the studio, we have a tiny monkey. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> my, my new little homie. I'm, I'm telling you, he's gonna be riding on my wheelchair with me wherever I go. <laughs> he's the uh, 
Jason over there is my partner. He's the, the plasma lighting and induction lighting. They, they've got all these crazy, crazy lighting companies that they that they're doing and distributing everywhere now and they're they're a big part of hemp fest you know that's great there's he's coming out and he's he's bringing his his lighting company and he's just decorating the entire amphitheater we've got screens and uh projections that are going to be 80 feet tall in the buildings and wow 40 feet wide he's doing these uh led pot leaves all over the walls that are just bright it's, it's going to be like a almost kind of like Disneyland meets the strip meets hemp fest you know wow so like it's, carnival it's but, the, but the monkey is yeah, I just love that little guy <laughs> I wish we had a video camera here that we could put him on but. <laughs> All right. be there. So, so we have a winner uh, for our Hip Fest tickets. It's Keith. Uh, and uh, congratulations. congratulations, Keith. I will make sure that I personally get these. See, I know who won. Oh. <laughs> so that's right, Keith. Uh, we'll, we'll contact you after the show, and we'll make sure we get you your tickets to Hemp Fest. So you're getting a pair of them on the house. All right. So what else do we have in the local news? We had the Las Vegas City Council meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, combined planning commission meeting where they went through how they're going to rank and score the applications. Now, Chili, did you guys, did you guys put in an application for an MME for the state of Nevada? Or are you on a part of one or We yeah, we we had to go to do so many different things just to, for for Hempfest. Yeah, I mean uh, that's why I was with uh, Derek O'Connor, our attorney. I just left there before I got here, <clears throat> and I think we're on our thirteenth license that we've had to do for very, you know, besides the city licenses and yeah. county licenses, yep. state licenses. Yep. Yeah, we're 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 doing an awful lot of. It's just running around. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've helped several different people, you know, with their paperwork and and everything else. It's a bear, I'm telling you. Uh, these black circles under my eyes aren't just because we've had an event for the past five days for every day. It's because then I'm doing paperwork on top of paperwork on top of paperwork. It's crazy. So, um, where are you guys thinking of going in? North Las Vegas City County. You said 13 different. We, we're, I'm based up. Um, in South County, in South area right now by Henderson. Mm -hmm. So we're, 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 I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to say something that changed because we're, we're having, actually we have a meeting tomorrow night. Okay. And we're, we're doing our Thursday meetings and this is growing so fast. When we had came out, we jumped on it so quick. We weren't even sure if we were going to do a hemp fest this year, but I talked to the, my partners. And yep. in LA and up in Seattle, and I said, you know something, the, the laws changed. We we should probably jump on it now, get the name now. So I jumped on it, I got the names, and then it went from there as maybe we should just wait, let the laws move a little bit, and do it next year. But then everybody said, if no. we don't, somebody else will swoop. A, yeah. Someone's going to do a Sin City Hemp Fest or a Sin City Kush or Las Vegas or yep. so I said we well, got to do it now and if we're going to do it it went from doing it to we got to do it right yep you know, otherwise we're going to have 85 other people comp competing against us mm -hmm. so well we we were asked to you know to look at doing it in April and I said you know what at the time it's not quite there yet but October seems good yeah it's it, it seemed to work out they just didn't have the dates um so but it's 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 worked out for us that seems to be the best weather i'm, I'm kind of glad we didn't try to do anything in july and august oh no um, yeah it's a the little heat and you got the rain and well i mean they have the reggae festival in like july or something like that and it's always just kind of like really 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 hot out there um in concentrated area and that's also in the clark county amphitheater so Oct when I heard it was October, I was like, oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> good. It's, yeah, uh, it's, it also worked. Well, there's a, we've got a few surprise, surprise uh, artists who are going to be jumping on stage that we haven't advertised yet. And um, we had to work around their schedules also. Trying to get a lot of people in one town at the same time was probably the most difficult part. Well, yeah. I was going to say, you know, Snoop Lion lives here now. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> he's up in my area. Yeah, yeah. Flavor Flav lives around the corner from me. I see him at the grocery store all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw him at the SLS on their opening boy. Yeah, uh, boy. I've run into him at the bowling alley, at the Applebee's. It's, <laughs> you know, at the 7-Eleven. Uh, Las Vegas becoming legal is, is the reason why you're seeing a lot of people move in here. 
Yeah. A lot of people have wanted to live here all along, but it's like they don't want to bother getting arrested every time, through, you know, so. Yeah, it was so restrictive until about 13 years ago when they passed this law. It was so restrictive that it was uh, a felony. It was, it, you know, up until oh, yeah. about 15 years ago, it was it was a felony to, you know, possess cannabis. And so it's like. Yeah, yeah, when I moved here 22 years ago, my friends all were lo like looking at me like, you're going to Las Vegas. You realize that they'll take away your car for a seed, right? right. <laughs> I'm like. I, I'm a, you know, I've, I'm a, been a promoter and festival producer for 30 years, but I started as a musician. I myself have sold over 20 million records. So we toured through Vegas for years and years and years. And back in the day, I remember coming through, got 15 and seeing billboard signs where there was a, a guy holding a joint and it said 20 years underneath. 20 years you know, the that, life. That was their warnings before you got in town. Yeah, so, let this be the warning like right here. We're kind yeah. of, we're, we're making history right now. It's, yeah. And it's, um, it's, I'm super excited to be, you know, in on the ground level of this opportunity because it's just, it's growing exponentially and the laws are opening up. People are moving here. Um, stuff is getting excited. Hemp Fest is coming. Woohoo! We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's just so much to be excited for, you know, and hopefully as we transition, you know, to actually getting these establishments up and running, more and more people decide to move to the valley and make this their home and, you know, raise their families here. Yeah. It's, it's it's all about expanding and, and this, you know, the Hemp Fest is, is a movement. It, it's a it's a rally. It's a, you know, the, ba you know, the bands used to be just something that were on the side, you know, it's just... The whole purpose behind it is to to gather new people and, and and get some more power and some vote and 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 push it. So yeah, just I mean to bring awareness to this whole issue that um, that hemp is is industrial, hemp is medicine, hemp is you know hemp is food, right? Fuel, fiber. Oh, we've, got yeah. a, we've got some pretty neat stuff. A lot of hemp bicycles and uh, we're we've I think we have the hemp car that's going to be there. We're Awesome. I mean, a lot of stuff. We've we just we've and Jeannie Herrera, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, right there. So uh, that's it's really exciting. Her, you know, her husband was saying a long time ago, hemp will save the planet. A genius, a, 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 one of the greatest. You know, yep. from from music to to the literature, his his books. I mean, he 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 was on top of his game. You know that when we were first interviewing uh, assembly people for legislature this this past uh, what two years ago now almost, we were up at Michelle Fiore's house and I took the book Emperor Wears No Clothes and I highlighted a bunch of it for her so that she could understand that it wasn't just a medicinal uh, issue for us. Also, it was about the beginning um, or the continuation of the industry in America uh, to bring hemp back to America so that, you know, that we don't have to, I don't have to buy my hemp seeds from Canada. You know? uh, right. And right. that's just the one that we put in our cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to import stuff like that from Canada uh, just so that we can put it in our cookies. It's just, it's out insane. And then it makes the, the product more expensive. And yeah, then, and she yeah. read through that book, and it and she she handed it off to someone else up there. So the Jack's book is now making its rounds up there in legislature. In, for, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because I asked her for it back, you know, because I had highlighted nice. and everything. I asked her for it back. I said, you know, can I have this back? Because I got it from Jeannie. I got two of them from Jeannie, and I was like, I, can I have my book back? And she's, oh, you know what? I already passed that on to somebody. Else. I was like, okay, it, <laughs> yep. it's gone to good use. Yeah, as long yeah. as it's, it's being read, maybe they'll use it <laughs> and read it. And maybe it'll change your mind or two. Right. Hopefully. God willing. <laughs> hey. For sure. For all they sure. gotta do is read it, and I think it will. Now let let me ask you. You you've been doing hemp fest in, in different states and whatnot. Do you see cannabis as this generation's industrial revolution, their dot com boom? Do you see this as the next generation of green jobs or of jobs period? I, I totally do. I I mean this in the I mean it's it's been it's been building and building and building the last few years this has exploded I mean look, look at John Davis he's going on uh, everything from CNN to so many networks talking about the stocks yep. um, the, the explosion this is the it's it's a it is the new unfortunately it's turned into a blue collar 
my opinion, blue collar billion dollar business because everybody's jumping on it and riding on it. But yeah, I I, I, I can totally see that. I, I believe it. I, I think it is. I knew that I knew that it was uh, coming of age when I started seeing a lot of stock um, stock companies, um, you know, jumping on board with them. And I started, you know, looking into investing in some of these companies, and I learned a lot of them were pump and dumps. And I said, "Oh, okay, it's too soon. It's yeah. too soon. It's too soon." And so I know, you know, but I know it's coming. You know, right. but they they have the meter for uh, you know the wealth in America sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, but but see, that's that's part of your question. The the kids, the new generations, that's that's kind of what Hempfest is about too. Rally, getting getting them in and educating them. And, right. So, all right, you guys, we're gonna go on a break now, and when we get back, chili from Hempfest and and some more uh, some more logic. The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll-free 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Hi, welcome back, everybody. This is Nevada Cannabis News, and we have Kurt Dukoc, Raymond Fletcher, and Chili from Hempfest in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Tim on the line. Tim's got a question. Hey, Tim, what's going on? Uh, well, I uh, recently moved here uh, into the Vegas area, and uh, I'm very interested in uh, getting involved in the medicinal marijuana uh, programs. And uh, I saw yesterday I had missed a, a job uh, uh, fair there at, uh, for the county, but I was wondering how I would get uh, information on when I could uh, uh, find another job fair, or if you had any idea when there might be some more coming up for city or county. Sure. We, ha we have another job fair scheduled in November. Um, yeah. But if you like, uh, you can email me and I can get you put onto our to our list. What we're doing is we're building a uh, list of all the people who came to the job fair. And as jobs come up, because a lot of these businesses are actually going to be opening in November and December, because that's when the they know they're going to have their licenses. But as the jobs come available, we're going to be sending emails out to all the people that came to that. So if you like, you can email me at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan. Yeah. Kurt at weekend okay. 702.org and I'll go ahead and uh, and I'll uh, I'll get some information from you and we'll put you into that list so, you know that's uh, one thing that we didn't discuss is our job fair yesterday we had over 250 people put in um, questionnaire applications uh, for our database there are jobs available that are right now for graphic design and a lot of like ancillary type of jobs. The the bud tenders, the cultivators, and the production won't be online until November. So those of you that applied for those type of jobs, that you know that's when it's going to come to fruition. Um, but all of the ancillary businesses that are hiring right now, we'll get a, a list of names and and um, and 
skills that are available. So with 250 applications yesterday, people from the library were telling us to be quiet. <laughs> wow, it's amazing. And, and don't don't forget, um, those that would like to find further information, you can go to WeCan702.org. You can like our Facebook page, or you can go ahead and join up and become a member on our meetup page. So there's a bunch of options out there, and you could also follow us on Twitter. That's right. That's right. And if you want to become involved, the easiest way is to volunteer. Uh, to volunteer to be an activist and to be involved in your community. That means when there's city council meetings, county commission meetings, go to them, listen to them, comment. That's right. And if you keep an eye on our Facebook page and our and our meetup pages and that, we post those city council meetings. We we also throw a lot of other great events uh, besides the job fairs. We, we throw the potlucks patients and patients meeting. first meetings. So, you know, check out our calendar and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep you informed with everything that's coming up. You know, not only the things that we do, but the things that Las Vegas Normal is doing, that Hempfest is doing. We, we try to keep the community informed. And, and, and that's one thing that, that I, I love about our organization is that we're reaching out to the entire neighborhood, the entire community, and we're able to get people like Lady Rako and hear yeah. her, her play and her band, you know, and you have different events for members of your, your groups that may not be feeling well, may need, you know, words of encouragement or with the patients meeting, connect to somebody that may be able to help you grow something that you're network networking opportunities is what it's really all about and and it's phenomenal to have something like that in our community we really oh speaking of you know what we had our first patients first meeting in perump perump last weekend and guess what i came home with something and it wasn't a hooker <laughs> <laughs> it was fireworks oh, oh no you're breaking the law breaking the law breaking the law <laughs> Are they illegal here? I thought they were illegal. Well, it, see, it's weird. You can buy the fireworks in Pahrump, right? Mm -hmm. Then you've got to sign this paper saying that you've got to take them out of their county within 24 hours. You've got to take them out of night. You light them off there. And then you bring them here. And if you were here July 4th, you will discover that Las Vegas is like number one for illegal fireworks shows ever. <laughs> and speaking of Flav of Flav, all his <laughs> neighbors refuse to leave their houses during July 4th because they're afraid they're going to come home and they're their house is gonna be yeah, he, gets, he gets pallets of fireworks delivered and they're they they uh they shut them down this last year because uh they were afraid wow <laughs> the I police came and said, 20 no, minutes look. into it or oh, 20 minutes in the no police kid. were shutting him down yeah how oh. so, but oh. uh i actually uh, i had the police come to my house because you know we used to do it like the whole week before the fourth of july and they came to my house and they saw all the all the quote illegal fireworks and they told me to take them take them put them back into the garage and wait till the fourth of july <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't even bother confiscating them or ticketing they're just like you know put them away wait the fourth of july is coming up and light them all off then <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah no illegal fireworks i think are just kind of a a staple here in las vegas you know um this year we got not only hail on the fourth of july Lightning. Uh, lightning. Yeah. It was crazy. Wow. Was, there were some pretty cool We were just up in the Northwest, so it's not even like we were on Mount Charleston or anything. We were up in the Northwest, and there was hail coming down, and I said, is the world ending? <laughs> it's like snowing in Vegas in the, like, you know, hail anyway. So uh, back to on track. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any track at this point? <laughs> dropping the ball, dropping the ball. Uh, the city, the city meeting. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. The city meeting. They're going to set up a marathon meeting over a two-day period to go through the applications. Uh, there were concerns raised at this meeting that applicants were receiving letters stating that their information was not submitted, but the information was submitted. It was just contained in their state application area yep. of the packet. Yep. Now, the city of Las Vegas is the only municipality that required you to submit your state application with your municipal application. And that Can was, you say lawsuit? And that was, yeah, that was two weeks before the state application was due. Well, and this is what the concern is, that um, the municipalities have been doing a reach around on the state, and the state really don't like it. The state wants all their money. <laughs> and you can't blame them. And, and now there's concern about 
how um, the city the city may not award all 12 applicants, they're saying. Well, you know, they were only supposed to get 10 in the first place. Well, they dropped the ball by not following, saying, hey, okay, are we are we going to poop or are we going to get off the pot? They didn't, they didn't I remember do that. that. You yeah. know, and it's because they dragged butt so long that we're in a predicament that we're in. That's the reason the county reallotted them. Well, and, and also it's the county and the city these they, they keep trying to say that they decide who gets the licenses it's it's crystal clear to me when i read sb 374 that this is a merit-based application process performed by the state they they had you send up non-identified folders that don't give you any clue who the applicant is and these these folders are supposed to be ranked by people on a scoring system based on all the different criteria you're supposed to meet and the top top applicants the best applicants are the ones who get the licenses the city it's not we want to give them to our friends it's or somebody that's been in business in the city a long time it's it's the best applicant out there so the city really doesn't have say in it and neither does the county well, well the you know what they're trying to do what they're trying to do is say that when they come down from the state when they come down from the state we we're want just them all. Well, we want them all, but we'll ignore those ones that we don't want just to choose who we want in our district. Well, well the city gets 12 dispensary licenses, 12 provisional licenses. And if the city doesn't like them, then however many, we get the next set of applicants. But the city doesn't want to. They want the total number of applicants for dispensaries in the city of Las Vegas to be given to the city so they can pick regardless of how the state ranked them. Well, you know what? I, I don't see any good coming out of this, and I just hope that it doesn't stymie the whole process. I'll say it. I will say it. You know what comes out of this? Pay to play. <laughs> it's Las Vegas. That's a given. Yeah, well, that yeah, that's, that's the reason they did the merit base was to try to stop the pay to play. And, and people like uh, Stavros Anthony don't want that. They want the you know the hypocrisy you know hey i'm a former metro officer i don't like medical marijuana but i like pay to play that's in my opinion i don't like <laughs> medical marijuana opinion, huh? but i'll open the business so i can make the money off of it right <laughs> well and those are the people that shouldn't have the businesses exactly. you know some of these people that were asking me you know about different questions i was helping people get their you know applications in and i i said you know when they were talking about production i tell them that oil uh waxes butter stuff like that is the new is the new way of things and i said well haven't you heard of the 710 cup and they said he said well yeah i've heard of the 710 cup what does it mean and i said that's oil upside down Duh. <laughs> 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 All right, you guys, we need to wrap it up here we pretty do. quick. Yeah, no, Chili, what if people want to get some more information on Hemp Fest or some of those LED lightings you were telling us about? How can they get that information? Well, you could, uh, Hemp Fest, you go to LasVegasHempFest.com. And get uh, your you, tickets. You can find out some stuff at CushtownUSA.com. And, of course, uh, uh, my buddy with all the lighting he's got his uh sponsorship on the website with us and he's got so many names i, I don't even know where they start plasma lighting design build install grows in, induction lighting we just call him jason ellis Fantastic. <laughs> well, anything coming up this week jason the light guy uh let's see what do we have coming up this week uh, I think the next event on our calendar is our patient's first meeting at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on Maryland, and that's on the second Saturday of this month, or September. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so make sure you check us out at weekend702.org. Like our Facebook page. You want to become a member, you can join on Meetup. And you can listen here for more Hint Fest information and tickets up until the event. We're going to be handing out tickets up until the event and promoting this event and making sure that it goes off well. Thank you, Chili, for coming in. Thank you for having me. And that's it for this week for Nevada Cannabis News. Be safe, everybody. See you next week.